Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel Benavides with the Block Squad Podcast. It is the uh, 9th of June here in San Antonio. It's 8.13 p.m., and we are going to get started with the 58th episode of Block Squad. Uh, we're looking at Coin360. We're going to get started right away, guys. Please remember, before I get started, though, that uh, nothing that you hear on the podcast today is uh, trading advice, financial advice, etc., and we will uh, continue to go over that ad nauseum. Um, at several points of the video if you're watching on twitch and youtube or the podcast if you're listening on the many other platforms that block squat goes out on uh with that being said let's move forward uh we're looking at coin360.io we can see that uh we're down a little bit across the market a uh, few uh coins are up but uh on the whole we're, we're down two to five points xrp down at uh five uh, five point six one percent Tron down 7%, Binance down 5%, Cosmos down, I uh, can't really see that, what is that, 5%, and Bitcoin is down 3.31%. So that's just a snapshot of the market, guys. Um, we're going to jump on over to uh, the chart. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin against Tether on the Binance, and uh, I'm going to leave that up for a minute while we discuss some, some news and some trending stories and whatnot. Um, so um, I was going over crypto panic uh, taking a look at some of the some of the stories um, and I'm just gonna go over some trending stories briefly right away um, six hours ago from being crypto.com uh, being crypto.com reports Russia considers creating a financial center for cryptocurrency trading on the Chinese border that's very fascinating stuff guys uh, hopefully we'll hear more coming out of the space about that um uh it's fascinating intriguing uh but you know what does it mean for the greater scheme of things we saw a story come out a few days ago about uh united states miners kind of uh pulling ahead of chinese miners for for crypto i don't know how true that is i get, d don't ask me to quote the source uh but we did go over it a couple episodes ago so um Eight hours ago from dailyhodl.com, MoneyGram exec predicts crypto takeover after internal tests with Ripple and XRP. That's interesting. 11 hours ago, Facebook's new cryptocurrency, Libra, will only make Bitcoin stronger. That's from beingcrypto.com. Uh, 11 hours ago, 19 hours ago from U.Today, XRP price under bulls control, why traders are so optimistic. That was until a little bit earlier. Uh, as we can see here on the chart, uh, we've been kind of, we're still basically within a range, guys. And we'll take a look at those support and resistance levels a little bit later. Uh, but it, we're, we're in a range on a downward trend channel. So that is going to ultimately come to a head at some point when uh, maybe a little while. Uh, so we'll take a look at that again a little bit later, 20 hours ago from uh, ethereumworldnews.com. Max Kaiser's Facebook. Yeah. Uh, so he's saying uh, Max Kaiser from, from RT Russia today is saying Facebook's crypto will kill XRP and all coins and boost Bitcoin. Uh, a couple uh, days ago, uh, a day ago, banking giants say Ripple and XRP will transform. So uh, if you hadn't been following along last couple of days, there's been a lot of uh, news about XRP. Probably why it's down so hard right now. Now, I, I mean, it's, you know, all these terms are like relative guys, right? To whatever time frame you're referring to. Um, I think on the whole, we're still bullish. We're in a downward trend channel. And we're fluctuating up and down within that trend channel so everything is relative so just keep that in mind if i say one thing and you're thinking the other we may be talking different time frames you know on the current reference time frame but um on the whole you know all this stuff is to be considered 
Um, this pretty much does it for the for the trending news. I'm not gonna go anything over anything beyond that, apart from this freaking tweet that John McAfee uh, came out with today. Let me move this over so you guys can take a look, and I'll we'll read along together. Um, so John McAfee tweeted at 12:43 p.m. on June 9th, 2019, from Cuba. I've collected files on corruption in governments for the first time. I'm naming names and specifics. I'll begin with a corrupt CIA agent and two Bahamian officials coming today if I am arrested or disappear. 31 plus terabytes of incriminating data will be released to the press. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, John McAfee um, in a uh, decades long career as probably one, one of the most prominent cybersecurity experts in the world uh, has been keeping tabs on on everybody and everything. Uh, so, uh, and we can see here he's bringing uh, that social currency to bear in order to prevent from being arrested. Um, what can what can we learn from what's happened in the past uh, with people like uh, like the guy from WikiLeaks and uh, Edward Snowden? I think what we can assume is that uh, if the United States or, or whoever is intending on arresting John McAfee, they're going to do it regardless of uh, the results or the, the, the fallout. Um, you know, I don't think anybody's going to call off the FBI just because John McAfee makes these kinds of, of threats. Uh, so, you know, like, I mean, that's not really how... Uh, power functions within our government and not supposed to function that way but um, but we often see stuff like this I don't know I mean uh, it worked in uh, what's his name the uh, British hacker that hacked the Pentagon and found the UFO files I can't think of the guy's name right now but uh, he was supposed to be extradited and they eventually dropped charges uh, on him because they would have had to have tried him in court with some of that evidence uh, so they didn't feel like uh, but I mean that's like I mean he was holding like supposedly holding like serious state secrets and, and stuff and it would have come out if he was tried publicly so who knows um, uh, I think it just probably depends on like the level of of, uh, of secrets we're talking about here but anyway uh, I thought that was super interesting. Uh, obviously, blowing up on Twitter it came out a few hours ago, and it's already been retweeted 8.6 thousand times and liked 17.6 thousand times. So, and comments abound, right? So, um, so uh, just wanted to bring that to you guys' attention. Let's do the squawk real quick, and then we'll move into like some technical stuff, and then get out of here. Um, 8.20 p.m. is the time now. Uh, 1.20 on the Universal Clock. It's the new day. Uh, so technically this should be like uh, ep the episode for the 10th. But we're doing the 9th because I had a rough morning this morning. I wanted to do this stream in the squawk this morning, but I couldn't. Uh, you know, sometimes stuff happens, gets in the way. So I was up and I had other things I needed to do urgently. So, um... So let's do the squawk. Uh, coming in at 20th, moving into the top 20 is Maker. Uh, who's talking about the Maker Dow the other day? Um, well, I think was it? I was I was listening to the most recent Joe Rogan podcast with Andreas Antonopoulos, and I think he maybe on that one had brought up Maker Dow, uh, or maybe it was another word, but I can't remember. But um, basically, uh, you know, the interesting stuff that's been happening with MakerDAO that's trading right now. Just, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and cover it in detail. I usually s do a quick version for 20 through 11, but because it moved into the top 20, I'll, I'll mention it in some detail. Uh, Maker MKR coming in at 20th by market cap trading at 740 and 73. That's down 4.0% on the day. Uh, overall seven day graph is bullish, but, uh, recently, uh, bearish. 
Tezos XTZ coming in at 19, trading at 1 and 22, down 4.08%. Neo coming in at 18th by market cap, trading at 11 and 62, uh, down. Uh, Neo is down 2.78%. Ethereum Classic ETC in at 17th, trading at 8 and 8, down 3.27%. Cosmos Atom in at 16th, trading at 5 and 83, down 4.55% on the day. IOTA in at 15th, trading at 40.7 cents. That's 40.7 cents, guys, down 4. Correction, 5.54% on the day. Dash coming in at 14th by market cap, trading at 142 and 58, down 1.72%. Monero XMR in at 13th, trading at 83 and 40, down 4.41%. Tron TRX in at 12th, trading at 2.9 cents, moving into that 2 cent range, down 8.4%. 0.4% on the day. That's uh, that's a larger move for Tron that we've seen in recent days, guys. Cardano, ADA in the 11th by market cap, trading at 7.9 cents, down 5.02% on the day. And Stellar XLM in at 10th, moving into the 10th place. So we have some movement going on. Cardano's out, Stellar's in, uh, I believe. Don't quote me on that last one. Uh, trading at Card uh, Stellar's trading at 11.8 cents and that's down 5.74 percent tether usdt in at ninth trading at one dollar even down slightly by 0.31 percent uh, bsv bitcoin sv in at eighth by market cap trading at 182 and 90 down 5.57 percent on the day binance coin bnb in at seventh by market cap trading at 30 and 41 down five percent even eos by the same symbol in at sixth trading at six and 15 down 3.28 percent on the day bitcoin cash bch in at fifth trading at 378 and 51 down 3.84 percent on the day litecoin ltc in at fourth by market cap trading at 114 and 45 down 2.9 percent on the day for litecoin guys um we're moving to the top three now guys of course xrp in at third place with a market cap of 16.3 billion trading at 38 cents that is down 6.05 percent on the day ethereum eth in at second by market cap with a market cap of 24.8 billion trading at 233 and 93 down 4.28 percent on the day and lastly of course bitcoin btc in at first by market cap that market cap being 135.7 billion approximately. Circulating supply on Bitcoin is 17.7 million still, uh, up slightly at 17.7, uh, 17,750,300 17, Bitcoin out there. And uh, that's down 3.62%, that 24 hour change. Uh, and uh, that's gonna do it for us, for the, for the squawk. Let's kick that out of here. Um, got a couple of things to to go over we're just going to kind of look at the chart real quick and uh and then we'll, we're out of here um so i didn't go over the charts like i usually do when i'm running through the squawk i did kind of a speed squawk today uh but let's just take a look real quick uh let me pull out on the daily okay so here we got uh neo gas a little bit of fluctuation nothing too crazy there's that bullish candle that we saw a few days ago drop down slightly and consolidating again uh neo uh we're just uh yeah like i said we're down a couple of days ago and we've been kind of consolidating slightly bullish candle today on neo ethereum classic guys a lot of these candles are going to be uh bare or red candles or in my case purple um but yeah we're down a little bit on ethereum classic as well all these should be uh, fairly bullish and uh we're also in a downward trend over the last few days xmr we can see is down uh that's monero ada uh cardano uh also kind of down tron was supposedly down significantly yeah we just formed a new candle so actually um today's candle would have been this one right here the second to the last one that we're looking at uh nice big bearish candle uh xlm stellar lumens also down uh, bsv again down you know interesting kind of looks like a hook right here right like we kind of pumped up bsv i'm wondering if it's gonna if it starts consolidating around this level for a few days guys i'm wondering if we're gonna start seeing a, a pump up in the next few days uh bsv will be very telling we're looking at that on the bitfinex by the way uh binance coin against tether on the binance uh is also we had a, a, a bullish day today uh, we're kind of flat right now first hour into the trading day eos same story all these are going to be same stories guys uh everything looks under oversold though or or approaching under oversold limits 
on these uh, higher market cap coins. Uh, let's see, uh, Litecoin against Tether on the Binance also overbought, but making its approach downward, turning. I'll have to see how that turns out. Bitcoin Cash, similar story. Bitcoin Cash definitely approaching over sold territory. Uh, and in a downward trend, we can see here XRP broke out below this triangle that we had, uh, we were taking a look at a few days ago. So let's drop that. And uh, so it's just kind of, it's kind of more, um, it's just a different story, isn't it guys? Uh, let's see, let me get my magnet up. Binance at uh, 38 cents, 38.3 cents. So, I mean, you know, it just depends on how you cut it. Uh, we could just be in this kind of sideways like like I said same thing with um, with what we're talking about with EOS guys and and, uh, and BSV I mean uh, next few days are gonna be very very telling on the daily chart Ethereum classic similar story still well within the trend channel that we drew days and days ago um, so but but volume is dropping uh, Ethereum against tether on the Binance showing uh, oversold stochastics and uh, MACD is uh, approaching the, the center line. Uh, so it's on the overbought side, but approaching center line with uh, sell, vo sell volume in place, excuse me. Um, and, uh, and we broke down a, a below this, this, uh, this FIB level. This was the uh, 0 0.23 FIB level. Um, so and with this downward trend channel, uh, we are uh, approaching the 0 0.38 to Feb level. So um, I'd just be really interested to see how things go over the, over the next few days. This may turn out to be uh, way more draw a way more drawn out trend channel than we initially anticipated. And I think that's um, we're gonna talk also about uh, cup and handle. Uh, cup and handle for you for those of you guys know there's uh, there's many continuation patterns when you're talking about uh, pattern analysis and, and technical analysis and um, and uh, there's only a handful of reversal patterns as opposed to continuation patterns um, we got and we never really got like a like a nice solid there it is uh, aha moment uh, in terms of reversal patterns on the daily chart, the way we had back in November 2017, December 2017, we definitely had, uh, I think it was like a double top back there. Yeah, uh, definite double top. We had the bull trap, the bear trap, the whole deal. Um, and then we began into this like uh, long term wedge pattern, the end of which formed this big drop, which a lot of us weren't expecting. But if you kind of look at it now, we almost have and I haven't looked up I'm gonna do that tonight, I promise. And we'll come back and we'll talk about it tomorrow. I'll look up like the academic uh, stats for a cup and handle according to uh, Edwards and McGee. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna open up Edwards and McGee gold standard and uh, and pull out everything I can on, on cup and handle. I, I have the chapter bookmarked, I know where it is. I just need to pull out the specifics um, so that we can establish um, specifics on on cup and handle <clears throat> and if nothing else you know we get to learn cup and handle together uh but i'm 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 wondering if that's not what we're forming right now <clears throat> and for those of you who are partially familiar with cup and there has actually been some talk on trading view and twitter about this being a cup and handle um so <clears throat> i think i mentioned that on the stream probably around episode 52 or 48 uh, I was wondering if that's not, I may have been as far back as like the thirties or the forties, but, um, I'm not really sure about my time frame here, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on it guys. Uh, that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, as with all of them, you know, these next few days are going to be very telling. Uh, looks like with respect to Bitcoin, we are slightly below that fib level. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how things bounce around here uh, over the next 24 hours, over the next universal day. But we'll be back tomorrow to do the actual uh, 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 stream uh, squawk for for the 10th of June. And that will be 
uh, episode uh, 59. So, but uh, this was episode 58. Time now 8:31 p.m. Central Standard Time Zone, and we're looking at 1:31, 1:32 uh, on the UTC clock. Bitcoin now trading at six. Oh, sorry, 7,632 and 55, guys. And uh, according to Coinbase, that's uh, down 0.06% on the daily. Uh, let's zoom in before I get out of here and we, we shut this thing down. Uh, we're looking at the four hour, definitely uh, retesting those um, that upward resistance in this downward trend channel over uh, the last couple of days. On the hourly, uh, looking into greater detail, we can definitely see here some more of that. Uh, but but today was marked by this, this kind of downward pump. And, and, and we may continue to travel. I'm going to have to extend this trend channel tonight. But we may continue making our way down, guys. We are below this this FIB level, as mentioned before. Next uh, significant level is a, like a minor area of support and resistance that we're right above at 7566. Uh, some some significant uh, resist, support, rather, at 7360. And then we got this FIB level down here that I mentioned before, right around... Right around 7K, guys. Specifically, it's at... I can't get it to react like uh, with any kind of detail, but it's around 69.98. Right around 7, 7K on Coinbase, guys, is that is that FIB level that I was looking at. Again, below that, 69.05. So, uh, do we make it down below 69.05? Um, if we do... Uh, in the odd case that we do, we, we may. Um, and I mentioned this in my trading view post publication uh, a few days ago. We have support and resistance at 61.88, and then um, the uh, the uh, salvation or damning, however you want to look at it, fib level of 0.618, right around 5,900. Uh, so we'll continue to take a look at that. Um, that FIB level is based off of this larger move uh, that we've been uh, operating on since the, the, the big old pump back here on the uh, 1st of April. So if you recall, we, we pumped up and started forming the right end of this alleged cut. So but, um, that's where we're at, guys. Very exciting time in crypto right now. Very exciting time uh, to be trading Bitcoin. Uh, I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited uh, and we'll be here every day guys for like the next like 42 days uh, So if you have questions comments concerns, I'm really anxious to interact with all you guys on on uh, Twitter stock twits uh, Anchor I'm all over the place. So we'll see you guys later. I'm gonna get this green screen thing fixed I have right now. I have like silver on my forehead from the light. Anyway, sorry. I'm getting off off uh, the beaten path here guys so again my name is joel benavides thanks for listening we'll see you guys later i'm gonna let my uh my uh better half or my other self uh put us out for this episode here we go ready Thanks for listening to another episode of Block Squawk. Remember that nothing on Block Squawk is to be interpreted as financial advice, investment advice, trading advice, or tax advice. And seek out a financial advisor before risking capital. Block Squawk is listener supported, so if you go to anchor.fm forward slash Block Squawk and tap the support this podcast button, you'd be helping immensely in the maintenance, support, improvement, and longevity of the podcast and stream. If you don't want to contribute financially, you can always like, subscribe, tap the post notification bell, as well as comment and repost, and this also helps greatly. Again, thanks for hanging out with us a bit. I hope you reach out over Twitter. I'm at Joel Benavides. Apart from that, you can usually find me on Spotify, Anchor, Apple, and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio Public, Facebook pages, Instagram, LinkedIn, TradingView, StockTwits, and more by searching Blog Squawk or Joel Benavides. Good luck out there. I'll see you guys on the moon. Cheers. See you guys on the moon. That's the deal. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.